We have Cody Rhodes, Brandy Rhodes here with us. I am excited as I'm in Boston and was very excited when I saw this on the schedule. How do you feel about the first time AEW being here in Boston? Well, I know that we're particularly excited because Boston's just a great, it's a great city and a great country. And we've, we've visited here with different companies, but also the added fact that it's, it's sold out and it's such a kind of ravenous crowd, it's going to make for great TV. Yeah, no, absolutely. With um, the the excitement around here, it hasn't been like this in a while. I haven't felt like this in a while. I'm 35 years old. I've been through a few different uh, times in wrestling here, and the buzz in Boston and the buzz around here is probably similar to the buzz you're feeling everywhere. Right off the bat, I just want to ask a lot of questions that the fans are asking me to ask you, and um, I want to get right into uh, what was your reaction hearing AEW chants on a different brand's uh, pay-per-view the other night? I mean, when those when those come up, uh, you know, I wasn't I wasn't watching the pay per view, but when those come up, everyone, you know, your phone starts blowing up, and your your social starts uh, blowing up. Whenever the crowd chants something, you know, whether it's boring, whether it's the promotion, whether it's your name, it means they want to be rewarded with something. That's just kind of when you're in the ring wrestling 101, and we know we want to reward them. So it was it was flattering. I. I wouldn't be one to to gloat about it only because I know that one of the guys in that match got concussed and this job ain't that easy. But nonetheless, whenever we hear those chants, uh, it's it's more validation that what we're doing and what we've been saying about this market existing is real. But that also means there's a massive thirst for your product. I've had so many, you talk about social media, so many people in the California area are like, is AEW going to come to Sacramento now? And that's... <laughs> Are you guys, did you guys, are you looking into that now because of that situation? Well, we were looking into it uh, already because we're just, you know, it's, if you've seen the the announcements, like we have Dallas uh, tickets going on sale this Friday, we're moving our way across the country. That's how these trucks work. It's all, right. you know, new to me, but from a production standpoint, we logistically do that. And so we can, you know, cost effectively come down the Eastern seaboard, hit all these great places, uh, places like Boston, and then work our way across literally I-40 and head into the, uh, the West coast and then work our way up over there. So for sure it was already on our radar. It's a great wrestling town. Right. How did, I, I know you guys have answered a lot of questions about this, but how did Brandy get the idea? Was it just Brandy's idea of making the AEW um, sensor, uh, sensory um, and for autistic fans? Where did that idea come from? Uh, the idea actually came from the organization that we partner with. Uh, they're called Culture City, and uh, they're geared towards making as many experiences sensory inclusive as possible. So whether that's events like, you know, sporting events like wrestling or games or going to concerts or zoos or even museums, um, they're, they're committed to trying to get uh, as many buildings as possible to be sensory inclusive, which that means they have a sensory room, which is kind of like a, a safe place for people to go when they start to have uh, some of these sensory issues triggered. And, um, one of the one of the best things about partnering with with Culture City is they are already in a lot of buildings, so we've been able to see them in a lot of places. But um, another thing that we're working on right now is trying to get them to a lot of these uh, buildings that they've never talked to, or uh, maybe they've you know tried to talk to but haven't been able to get to the right person. So it's quite a bit of an undertaking. Um, I'm actually one of the board members for Culture City now. Uh, from the work we've been doing together, it turned out to be a nice fit. So. Uh, continuing my work with them and we're just trying to get them to as many places as uh as possible do you both feel that you're creating a a little bit of a brand new audience here uh are you hearing that you know hey i was never a wrestling fan but now I i'm liking what i'm seeing here I, I finally am getting into it are you hearing that one thing that's been uh, a bit of a revelation with the data that we receive we've got to we're flanking ourselves with really smart people who are able to kind of understand where these buys are coming from for pay-per-views all the way back to double or nothing, uh, where the ratings come in for television. And one thing you'll see is there's not as much crossover between us and WWE as I had originally anticipated, meaning that this audience is, like you say, somebody who perhaps one of the 10 million people who went away in 2001, uh, perhaps one of these returners, as they've kind of dubbed themselves, who are giving the product 
a chance after sitting out many years on wrestling. And that, that's, the, that's such a great responsibility to have. Like that's pressure for sure, but such a great responsibility. Hey, we know you're tuning in and that you might, you might've been turned off by wrestling at one point, but we're, we're, we're going to give you a product that will bring you back in with a human connection and new characters that you'll fall in love with, or you'll learn to hate, learn to love all that stuff. Um, so I, uh, I've been really surprised at the lack of crossover and the more just new fans appearing. Yeah. So uh, I do see that. Uh, just like you said, uh, will, will, uh, this is, I have to ask this one cause it just gets asked so much, uh, mid card title and what type of mid card title? I think with our focus right now on the, the women's championship with Rio, uh, winning the women's world championship, uh, Chris Jericho's your men's world champion. And now the tournament starting tomorrow, kicking off in style with the bucks versus private party, uh, over the, you know, world tag team championship. I wouldn't call it a mid card title only because, I feel like that comparison, and I'm not talking about the tags, I'm talking about whatever future title this is. Mm -hmm. I feel like that comparison is based upon WWE viewership. Right. Um, that right now their product has a mid-card title where it's specifically designated and can't really escape the middle of the card. Do we add another belt? Do we add another championship? There seems to be a hunger to do that, and whether that is hypothetical women's tag team titles or hypothetical uh, a men's television championship. We're definitely kicking those ideas around, but we really, it, it is a less is more situation in terms of we want the titles we currently have. Um, and the ones we'll have, you know, once we get to Charleston and Charlotte having three major titles, we want them to matter greatly. We want them to be able to main event any show, whoever's that women's world champion, in this case, Rio, Chris Jericho, or whoever wins the world tag team championship should be able to close any show down and leave people wanting more. That would be the goal. Yeah, I, I I like the idea of that. I think a lot of people like the idea of a TV title. How far away from uh, international travel are you guys? How far are the plans away from Canada or the UK or something in Japan? How how far outside the box or away is that? Um, not too far. I mean, as Everyone knows uh, Tony Khan. He owns Fulham. Um, he's very fond of the UK. Um, we, you know, are showing our show on ITV. We have a nice reach with Fight TV uh, for some of our other international partners, and now we have TSN in Canada. So um, it, it's really not too far off to be thinking about visiting these places. I would say we're we're looking to get there sooner than later, mm -hmm. um, but uh, definitely are, are are on our plans on calendar plans. I I mean, I'd, I'd, be, I'd be as specific as to say 2020, we should definitely be hitting Toronto and we should definitely be hitting the UK. There's no one in the, there's no one in the, the group, you know, the leadership of the company who's anti that. Uh, and then we've got Kenny Omega, who's from Winnipeg. That's a really unserviced uh, market. I forget Chris yeah. is also from Winnipeg. So I think, I think we'd love to get to the peg. Uh, we'd love to be in Toronto and obviously – uh, we've got a partnership with ITV and Fight in the UK. We want to make our presence known in the UK. Those fans are outstanding and unspoiled as far as wrestling fan goes. So I'd like to get out there sooner than later. Uh, we we hear a lot from uh, wrestling fans now that uh, people are very interested in these statistics. I, I've always thought wrestling's good when you can kind of balance it in the middle. But I, I also like the idea of taking a deep dive into it, wondering how deep you'll get into the statistics. Could there possibly be a page for statistics on the website where, you know, this guy won by a, you know, a DQ, this person's been counted out this many times. Sure. Will, will there be a mini show or how deep will that go? For sure, uh, stats and data are a big part of, uh, of what we're about to do. It doesn't sound that sexy when I say that, oh, we're going to have all this data and these stats, but... Um, I'll give you kind of more like a clear cut example. We're hoping to have top fives for the three divisions uh, released weekly uh, around the time perhaps we get to full gear. Uh, and those, you know, the wins and losses mattering wasn't just a campaign promise. Uh, I've used the AP poll for college football as an example of, you know, when you have a really strong win uh, versus when you don't. Um, 
and and how that might affect your ranking. But the deeper dive, like you said, about analytics and a heat chart and a percentage of times a guy's lost to this maneuver or things of that nature, it's definitely something that Excalibur, particularly, and Tony Khan have been working on since day one. Oh. So it will start to come onto your screen very frequently as the match numbers go up. You know, as guys that get more than five matches under their belt, that data is going to translate on your screen. Just this week alone, to be even more specific, I've increased the size of the lower thirds that show everyone's records um, just because it was something that fans had asked for on social media, and I agreed with it. So we've, we've all, you know, Matt Jackson and myself, we, uh, we went ahead and pulled the trigger on that. So you'll see that stuff as we go. It wasn't a campaign uh, promise. One thing, though, that will really help is more matches. Right. Yeah, it's it's the very beginning here, so you need more data to, to compile that. Um, yeah. Just to get into this real quick, i got to mention, I'm a gigantic Star Trek fan and a gigantic wrestling fan, and finding out that you guys are as well was pretty cool. How pumped are you for the Picard trailer? So I just saw that he called the pity uh, number one, and that was, like, incredibly <laughs> touching. Uh, I, I think that Patrick Stewart is he can really do no wrong. If you look at what he did with TNG mm -hmm. and how he took these somewhat ridiculous circumstances and put a level of craft and work to them that was such an unbelievable suspension of disbelief, knowing that he's behind the scenes with the card, uh, knowing that we're going to get seven of nine back, hearing that Janeway might make an appearance, uh, seeing you know, uh, Riker, uh, the, the whole thing is really... Shape, shaping up. I don't know where they're at with Worf, but you got 10 episodes and I, listen, <laughs> wrestling does the same. Oh, you got to bring back this legend and this legend. You know, and you want to present your fresh new cast. I'm totally down with that, but I really would love to see a Worf moment at some point in these 10 episodes. The CBS, it's been really impressive that that's how they've utilized All Access as a streaming platform, but I could go on and on about Picard and Discovery and Short Treks. They, uh, they've really... Uh, we're we're in a we're in a Star Trek utopia right now to have this many options. I feel it's reflective of wrestling because I'm a Star Trek fan and a wrestling fan, and a lot of the wrestling fan the, don't know what I'm talking about. But I'm like, you know, with the comic cons and the atmosphere and the shows, it's very similar. But yeah, awesome. It's a, it's a very similar fandom. Yeah, Star Trek fan that is very demanding, very specific. They've seen a lot. They're gonna tell you what they love. They're gonna tell you what they hate it. The Star Trek fandom is not unlike. A wrestling fandom because they they're I mean if you think about the original conventions they rallied for those conventions to happen it's not unlike wrestling who's rallied for this situation to exist where there are other shows besides WWE out there absolutely there's there's nothing like this I mean I wouldn't have a job doing this if it wasn't for all the people listening and everything it's kind of incredible speaking of having jobs and things like that I've been really vocal, obviously, since you guys launched being a commentator and stuff like that. Hey, Cody, check out my stuff. I'm Joe Cronin. Check out this. How, so you have to be your own biggest supporter sometimes in wrestling. Do you find it hard to deal with all of those other people who have been doing that? Requests for jobs that you've received from wrestlers and people everywhere who maybe need help, think you owe them something. Ha has it caused any issues with anybody yet? I, I just imagine you're inundated. It doesn't cause an issue with me because um, I kind of look at hiring, and I don't make all the hiring decisions, but I kind of look at hiring like my dad did. Right. Um, people that were really, really persistent, uh, he let them in. Paul Heyman was real persistent. He was a photographer who snuck into a production meeting right. when he was 14 years old. And Paul will tell you, my dad asked everyone to leave and then asked him who he was, what he was doing there. And then told Paul, you can stay. Uh, same with Teddy Long, who was parking cars outside, who then started getting ring jackets. The next thing you know, he's wearing a striped shirt and he's refereeing major matches. Um, that persistence is a huge part of wrestling. So I surrounded myself. The Nightmare family is full of uh, hires that are like that. And I expect perfection from those guys, just like I do for myself. Um, but no, it doesn't. What a cool thing to be to hear from legends, to hear from young people, to hear from fans, hey, look at this guy, that's not a problem. That, if it is, it's a great complaint to have. 
Yeah. Uh, well, for, for both of you being uh, in AEW now, having to wear so many hats for both you, Brandy and Cody, what's one thing that you're both looking to get better at or to sort of, you know, that, that you found you do like, but now you want to get better at now that you're both wearing so many hats? Oh, man, that that's a great question. I mean, I feel like literally everything, everybody can get better at all the time. So <laughs> it's just uh, more of a learning how to split the time, I guess, for me, um, spending a lot of time on planes, uh, spending a lot of time with getting less sleep, um, starting to try to adjust to life like that is is big for me. And I think I'm weathering it pretty good. I, I've been in no, in the last uh, two weeks. I've been home maybe two days. So I feel like that was enough for me to refresh and get right back out here. So <laughs> I think we're doing okay. But yeah, just, just picking it back up, being on the road like this. I mean, you know, tomorrow I've got, we have the live television show. At the same time, I've got uh, business meetings all throughout the morning. Um, just, just adjusting to that type of schedule because I'm used to focusing on one thing at a time. But uh, I like to multitask. I always joke that I'm a woman. It's what we do. Um, you're probably never going to hear me complain about multitasking. But oh. it's funny, I hear a lot of men complain about the multitasking thing. A lot of men complain about that. I well, after you, <laughs> I, I think I think women you were built for it because my wife with the three kids, the two dogs, and everything else. Like I've never seen anybody work like this before. So. <laughs> yeah. No. I I think the thing I'd like to work on the most is uh isn't the management side of things i actually think the management side of things is going well uh but i still want to be the franchise wrestler i and i've made that clear to my peers leadership tony but i'm not going to be the franchise wrestler unless i'm the franchise wrestler if that makes any sense unless my matches are the best unless the you know everything sells the best unless there's an organic connection with the audience and that's where I still have years and years and years of work to figure out and do. It's but I feel like out. you have that connection, don't you? Like I, when you come oh. out there, nobody else has that connection. And when you are competing with so many other different styles of matches out there, and yours yeah. is always the one that is in my memory that I want to see again because of the emotion usually that you bring in your matches. Well, I mean, right now, all that emotion is on the surface because I'm putting my neck out there. I'm putting my face on this. Every When you see me out there and it looks like I'm about to burst, it's because I'm, I'm putting everything I have into this. But all the same, I share a locker room with Kenny Omega. I share a locker room with John Moxley. Um, those guys are, are, are some of the best in the absolute world. And there's tons more. There's guys like Darby Allen creeping up. My good, 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 good friend, MJF, creeping up. It's my job to make sure, as a wrestler, I do the work. It's not just a fake slogan. If you don't do the work, you won't have that connection. I've been blessed to have it up to this point, and I'd like to keep riding it, but I can never get complacent as a wrestler. The moment that happens, I need to just put the headset on permanently. Well, I really appreciate you both taking the time out to come on the show today. Uh, it really means a lot uh, that you guys came on, and we I've never had this many questions. Um, is there anything you uh, both want to say to the fans before uh, we get out of here? What kind of dog do you got? I have a black lab um, and a border collie, and two two completely different dogs. One's motivated by food, and the other one just wants to take care of work herself to death for us. Yeah, that's you got that working breed. Yeah, and yeah. The, the kids. She'll just follow they? the kids around, you know, looking to help them or looking to rile them. You know, she'll bring them into the room with me out of nowhere. You know. <laughs> awesome. Well, tell tell your tell your pups hello. And uh, Brandy, did you want to say anything? Uh, come to the shows and watch the show. <laughs> uh, to all the fans who've been doing it or thinking about doing it. Uh, We'd love to, to have the opportunity to get you roped in. So turn us on on Wednesday night, and if we're in your area, buy a ticket. You'd be surprised as to how quickly you can fall in love with wrestling. Absolutely. We'll be, uh, there'll be so much wrestling going on. We're coming up in Philadelphia, Pittsburgh, Charleston, West Virginia, Charlotte, North Carolina, AEW Full Gear, November 9th, 2019. That's in Baltimore, Maryland. And, of course, um, Everybody's getting excited in uh, Texas right now because Dallas, Fort Worth tickets are going on sale October 11. Uh, so get those as well. AEWTix.com. 
Brandy Rhodes, Cody Rhodes, thank you so much. All Elite Wrestling Live Weekly Series, Wednesdays, starting October 2nd on TNT.